Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're talking about reconditioning versus replacing bearings. And here to help us out from American Roller Bearing is Chief Engineer Patrick Halp. Patrick, good morning, man, how you doing? Great, Tom, thanks for having me. It's good to have you here, and I know we got lots of bearings, and actually we got like five rings. We could make the Olympic symbol right now if we wanted to. You yes, realize we that? <laughs> well, maybe we'll do that a little bit later on. <laughs> hey, you know, what are some things that we want to consider when we're thinking about reconditioning bearings? Well, Tom, today we're going to focus on regrinding races and replacing rolling elements. This is often referred to as a class two repair. It is very common practice and is used in many industries. So all types of bearings can actually be reconditioned? Correct. As a rule of thumb, we say bearings over six inches in the bore and bearings with a value greater than $1,000. So is that what we have here? Have we got $1,000 bearings sitting here? Pretty close, Tom. Yeah, we got like a five grand worth of bearings here, don't we? Yes. You wanna go to lunch? <laughs> <laughs> so what's the benefit of reconditioning over totally replacing a bearing? Good question, Tom. Many times it is more cost effective than buying a new bearing. When we recondition a bearing, it is subject to the same in process and final inspections as new bearings. A reconditioned bearing gets the same warranty of a new bearing as well. Also, many times reconditioning bearings is beneficial to the customer because of shorter lead times. Shorter lead times lead to less downtime. Yeah, less downtime, that's definitely beneficial. So show me some bearings that are candidates for reconditioning and then show me what you look for to determine if they should be reconditioned or completely replaced. Sound good? Sure, Tom. All right, but, but first, if we were to do this, if we were checking out the bearings in the warehouse or wherever, we'd have to put on our PPE, right? Yes. So we have it right here just in case. Remember, safety first, always wear the proper PPE. All right, let's start with this bearing right here. What do we got? This bearing is determined to be a reconditioning candidate as it first meets some basic criteria. First, it was not involved in a catastrophic event, meaning its components remain whole. Okay. Second, a visual inspection shows no severe heat damage or spalling of the races or rollers. Lastly, the bearing is of a size and value that would provide an attractive savings. Like a thousand dollars, right? That's no. correct. Okay, now what about this one right here? For contrast, Tom, here's a sample of a race that has started spalling. This would disqualify it as a reconditioning candidate, as we would not regrind this race. This other one right here has severe corrosion and rust, and our inspectors also measured this outer race to be out of round. This is a bad candidate for reconditioning. So we'd have to replace that one. That is correct. So once we've decided we want to recondition a bearing, what exactly do we do? We recommend that the user contact their local motion industries branch, and that branch will facilitate the paperwork and transportation of the bearing. So any recommendations on the best way to package it for transportation, or you just throw it in the trunk and bring it there? Well, Tom, we recommend the bearing should be packaged as carefully as practical to prevent further damage. Shrink wrap is often used to protect from moisture and immobilize rollers. All right, and then when it arrives, what happens next? Once it arrives, we clean, disassemble, and inspect the bearings, and also provide a free condition report and reconditioning quote. Once we proceed, we put it through the same processes as a brand new bearing, and as we said earlier, it gets the same warranty as a new bearing. I think that's pretty good that you give it the same, you know, kind of warranty. So you guys recondition it to where it's almost like new, right? Yes, sir. All right. Well, there you have it. Things to look for when you're trying to determine whether to recondition or replace a bearing. Patrick, thank you so much. Good information today. Thank you for having me, Tom. That's Patrick Halp. He's the chief engineer over at American Roller Bearing. And if you have any questions, contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. And then go to our website, mihowto.com, for more how-to videos. With me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks for watching.